How's it hanging, Reject Nation? It's John coming at you with another music video reaction. Got some new songs here from Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park. Uh, coming out with some new stuff for his new solo effort, Post Traumatic, which, uh, if you remember, started off as a three-song EP and now is going to become a 16-track full-length album. And in sort of honor of the announcement of that, uh, Mike debuted two new songs, Crossing a Line, as well as uh, Nothing Makes Sense Anymore, two brand new songs and two brand new music videos, so I thought I would check those out today. As always, a quick disclaimer before we hop into this, cannot show the full uncut videos here. Uh, have to pare them down a little bit, otherwise they get blocked worldwide and nobody gets to hear anything at all, and that's not ideal. And that's no joke, because I have literally re-edited this video three times in order to get it up on YouTube, so... So uh, if you want to see the full uncut stuff, come on over to our Patreon. Got a lot of other cool stuff over there too. Full-length TV show watch-alongs, uh, exclusive videos and deleted takes, weekly Q&As, a good community of people. It's a lot of fun, so come check us out over there. Let's go for it. Here we go. This first song is called Crossing a Line. Hitting play. Synths. Ah, uh, okay. At the old Tower Records. Oh, wow. Red flannel. <laughs> <laughs> I bet this is the first time I heard that, right? It's not about status. We know it never was. Cause what good is the kingdom? This is not a goodbye now. I'm not going to go away. No, I don't Damn. have the answers. But I do have the faith. Oh. song now. Alright. Alright. Not bad. Not bad. 
<laughs> Funny enough, I actually saw the Instagram post that went out. This music video was shot very recently, actually. He put out just a picture, just a, a call on Instagram for anybody who wanted to come out and be involved with something a little special. Come on out to the old uh, Tower Records in Hollywood. And I would have gone had there not been a bunch of stuff to do that evening. <laughs> but um, I like what he's doing with this new solo album cycle, it seems like. I mean, I like what he's building on with these sounds. This is a popular tune, perhaps, than uh, the three that made it onto the EP. And I know people have said this is kind of their less favorite of the two songs here. But I thought this song had a really nice build. I like the timbre that he's working with, and especially given the poor reception that One More Light initially had, I feel like this song is refining and using some of those pop sensibilities in a more interesting way, at least based off that first impression I got. I listened to the album back when it first came out, and it wasn't exactly my cup of tea. Uh, still been meaning to pick up a copy and actually like give it a listen, given the context of all that has happened since it dropped. But just looking at this song, I mean, I really like the build, and I love the rawness that he's bringing to this. And um, even though this isn't the grabbiest song he's released so far. I would imagine that in context of the album, it will flow pretty well as one of the different facets. I like the production choices he's making here, especially in the earlier parts. It almost feels like the song ought to be backwards or something with the way things are syncopated. I like the instrumentation that he brings here. I mean, at least the EP stuff, he said he kind of played everything on that, and I get the sense that's what's going on here. And I like the choices he's making. I like the instruments, the sounds. I like the subtle guitars you get in there later on in the track. And I like, like I said, the build and the sort of crescendo, especially at the end. I think he's got a good grasp on the grooves of this and the punch of this. So uh, I am excited to get into the next one. Second song on here is called Nothing Makes Sense Anymore. It's the official music video as well. Ah, I got my headphones stuck in my hair. Here we go. Whoa. I remember this, man. <laughs> we were downwind of this situation. It was like Silent Hill that day. Everything was just ash and fog. Huh. Oh.
right, not bad. I like the way that that track builds and, and I, there are no drums. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. This is interesting too to to go back to the fire uh, cuz yeah, that was a that was a big that was a big week. Oh boy. Yeah, I remember the day that that happened or at least the day that, that started. We woke up and and just the outside world was gray. There was ash everywhere. It was raining ash into uh, the courtyard of our apartment complex. It was it was kind of everywhere all over this area of California. That was a pretty intense time and especially to see that sort of cacophony happening around the time, you know, given the context of this, given what we know Mike is processing and was going through while he was probably recording that, while he was working on all this. It's pretty striking, and I like the way he's uh, jumping off from those first videos that he did for this, those little cell phone videos in his studio and uh, at home and whatnot, um, and I like that he's building on that here. I feel like the, the look has sort of grown, especially piggybacking off that third video from the first cycle. This has a lot of cool, superimposed images, and it kind of builds the similar way that the song does, as the song is sort of going on, uh, building momentum, gathering parts and different sounds and sort of stacking them on top of each other and building the intensity that way. The video kind of follows suit because you have all these little details and just these little personal moments of him singing along with the song and then they start to uh, overlap and superimpose one another in these really striking visuals that do sort of equate to the cacophony and the turmoil that is being sort of hinted at through these lyrics. Especially, you know, part way through, halfway through, when that really became focal, I thought this video really came together. Both of these songs feel kind of on the brief side, although I guess this is about four minutes. But yeah, I just like the attention to detail, and I, I do like, oddly, the intimate quality these videos have. It's like nothing you couldn't have shot on an iPhone or something. I imagine that's probably how this happened. But just the choices here and the, the overlapping, it's really visual in a very simple but effective way, I think. And the sentiments of both these songs, you know, kind of following, again, out of that EP, I really like what he he's doing here just because I think despite again you'd always trade back a tragedy like that of like the you know passing of Chester and all of the ripples that have come out of the wake of that but um, at the same time I feel like it has catapulted Mike at least into making some very lucid and very heartfelt and very compelling new songs that are borrowing from the sounds that we associate with him, but it also has his own sort of quality on it. And especially it's not being Fort Minor, it's just being Mike Shinoda. I like that we've gotten a glimpse of his rapping in this context as well as his singing. These are both singing-oriented songs. I mean, his sense for rhyme is still there, but on these two tracks he showcases two kind of different approaches to singing and layering of those vocals. And I like what he's doing here, and I'm feeling like this this album as a whole is probably going to be an interesting experience. He said it's sort of documenting the journey through and, and out of, hopefully, grief. And that's all very apparent in the lyrics to both of these songs. And especially in the first one, you know, I, I may say that I don't care anymore, but know that that's not true. Kind of touching on these weird things that we do and say when we're grieving and the feelings that we have, the sort of despondence and whatnot when the world is upside down. And that too, you know, some of those literal shots where Mike or these landscapes, the fire, are not only superimposed, but also upside down, making this really disorienting and whatnot. I'm really excited to hear this album, and I feel like this could be something really special. I mean, I've liked every track I've heard off of it so far. I think the post-traumatic EP is perhaps a bolder collection of songs, but especially as the harbinger for the actual album now, I thought these two were cool, and I think it's nice that he decided to showcase a different side of the album's sound, because we already know the darker, the harsher sounds, as well as uh, that first track off the EP was not quiet, but but on a more soft side of the spectrum, a more gauzy side of the spectrum. And these are a little bit more uh, toothy than that one was. So uh, I'm liking the range of sounds. I like, you know, sort of the expression Mike is pulling together here. And I just, I like what he sounds like when he's on his own and processing things. Again, like, I, I really wish things could have been different. However, I think that something special is poised to come out of that. And that's kind of all you can hope for, given what life throws your way sometimes. It goes to exemplify that idea that art can be one of the most effective and the most lucid and the, one of the most major ways of coping with trauma and grief and just the things life throws at you. So I, I wish I could have gone out to that first taping because, yeah, they, they just recorded that one evening a couple weeks ago down in Hollywood. That sort of intimate quality to see all those people gathered around Mike and sort of sharing this moment. I'm imagining that's the first 
first time they heard that song and then all kind of singing it together by the end of the video, seeing the different tattoos people are rocking of the different lyrics or, or of Chester's face, you know, the, the images of Chester. And just seeing the love, that's one thing that over the years I've always gotten the sense for and I've always appreciated about Linkin Park and just their projects in general is like, say what you will, you know, you have your taste, whatever it is, you know, even if you hate Linkin Park, I gotta feel like you have to at least acknowledge that they have a very ingrained kind of family group, you know, like the LPU has always been a thing. There's always been an ingrained fan base and it always feels at least very intimate, very much like a family environment. And I like that he chose to exemplify that in just inviting the fans who were, you know, around to catch that Instagram post and who cared enough to show up. I think that's kind of exemplary of the vibe Linkin Park puts out there partly. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me guys. As always, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell to get updated every time a review or a video is out. Once again, come check us out on Patreon if you want to see the full uncut version of this video and uh, other sites and stuff that we're on down in the description box. And we will see you on the next one. Cheers!